math and beats we're gonna look at this video here we're gonna talk about accumulation points and isolated points let's take a look at this stuff okay first of all let's talk about accumulation point accumulation point well here we go let's let s be a set that is a subset of the real numbers then if we have some value x in r so x is just a real number we say that this real number is an accumulation point of the set s if every deleted neighborhood of x contains a point in s so to be more specific about it using our quantifiers that is the same as saying this statement right here for every positive epsilon we have that the deleted neighborhood of x with a radius of epsilon intersected with the set s is not the empty set and we call the set of all accumulation points of the set s s prime if we will that's just the notation so let's dissect this a little bit more what is it really saying if you have some subset of r right think visually this is just all real numbers right here the real number line and we have some subset maybe it's this subset right here s then we say that the number x the real number x somewhere in that set maybe right there maybe that's x it is an accumulation point of that set s if any deleted neighborhood we draw of radius epsilon about x if we intersect that little set with s then it's not an empty set of course not including the x because it's a deleted neighborhood and in the picture i just drew right above we could see that indeed that x value would be an accumulation point of s because disregarding x no matter how big of a radius i draw or how little i draw it there's going to be some point in s at the same time we're going to see a more concrete example here in a bit so just rephrasing this again in this sentence that you see here at the bottom it's the same the same equivalent to saying that x is an accumulation point of the set s if every neighborhood of x contains at least some other point in s that is not x same thing we were just saying a moment ago so conceptually it's important to know this now if it happens to be that we have some element in s but that element is not part <coughs> excuse me of the set of accumulation points for s so it's not in s prime then what we say is it's an isolated point of s that number y so we're going to take a look at some examples with both of these ideas and here's the first example let's consider this set right here the set s the open interval negative one to one we want to find the set of all accumulation points of s s prime note first of all that s is indeed a subset of r so we need that to talk about the accumulation point for the time being now our goal is to find s prime so to do this we need the set of all the accumulation points of this set s that's given to us so what do we want to do we want to find 
all the values of x, so we can draw an open interval around the x, hence a neighborhood, and this open interval also contains some other point in s, which is not x. Got a few diagrams to show you below that'll help us visualize the situation. So first of all, here is our set S. I'm just drawing on the number line just so we visualize it. All the real numbers between negative 1 and 1, but not including the endpoints. So what? Well, down here in this diagram, what we're looking at is that See these red intervals? There's just a few that we've drawn to show that, okay, I'm going to draw any open interval around any interior value of this open interval, negative 1 to 1. If I do that, then what happens? Well, what it's supposed to show us is that any of these open intervals that we draw, let's say each of them is some subset of S, B, right? some other B, some other B, all these different B subsets, no matter which one we draw within the interior of this set S, no matter where we center it. So for instance, this one on the far left, right in the center is X, for instance. We have that there is some element in the set, call it little b, belonging to B, right? Maybe little b is right there or right here, right? Wherever it might be. There is always some other number in that open interval that is not the center that is also within the set S. So every value that is part of S here, every real number between negative one and one not including those endpoints, all of those are accumulation points of S for that reason. Now, the only thing we haven't actually looked at because we just took care of everything in the interval is well what about the endpoints are the endpoints of this open interval also accumulation points for the set s here so to visualize that we draw little open intervals around the endpoints as seen in the diagram down below so thinking of the center as the endpoints either negative one and one for each of these little sub intervals, you can see that there is elements, say over here at negative one, right where that arrow is pointing, there's elements in this deleted neighborhood of negative one, which are also in S. For instance, negative 0 0.999999 whatever. Something really close to negative one. That is not negative one but yet it is in S. Or over here on the right-hand interval at 1, for instance, 0 0.999999999999, uh, positive, real close to 1, to the left of 1, and it is also in the set S. So what does that tell us? It tells us that the endpoints here of this open interval, negative 1 and 1, are also accumulation points for the set S. Thus, we get that the set of all accumulation points for this set S here, negative 1 to 1, is actually the closed interval, negative 1 to 1. So everything between negative 1 and 1, but also the endpoints, negative 1 and 1. So that's an example on accumulation points. I want to do just one more example here before the end of the video. I'm just going to write it out. Example. All right, we're going to do something similar. Let's find the set of all accumulation points S prime and identify any, excuse me, isolated points in S. What is our S? We're going to say S here is the union of intervals 1 to 2, and then just the number 3, and then also the open interval 4 to 5. Let's draw a picture, just visualizing that again. Here's the set of real numbers. 
real number line. Let's just draw in our set S. All right, so from one to two, we have these open intervals going on, one to two, so everything between one and two. And then the number three is just chilling. That's part of the set S. And then also four to five. Right? So that dot at three, everything between one and two, and everything between four and five. All of that is showing us visually the set S in this example. Now, each of the open intervals that we have here, one to two and four to five, think of those exactly the same way <clears throat> that we thought about uh, the last example when we had S was the open interval negative one to one. If we go through all of that reasoning the same exact way and start drawing little uh, sub intervals within the sets, the subsets, should I say, one to two and four to five, we're going to get that S prime definitely contains the closed intervals one to two and four to five. So for the exact same reasoning as in the previous example. So that should also make you think, really, any open interval where the endpoints are some finite real number should be having an accumulation points everywhere in the interval and at the endpoints in general. But what about this number three? Right? What's up with this three? X is three. What is up with that? Well, let me use a different color real quick here just to look at three individually. If I go to three, three definitely is in S, right? It's part of this set. No matter how tiny I draw an interval here, say of radius epsilon centered at three, we see that there exists some epsilons that are positive so that three is the only element in S. So those little intervals that I just drew around three is supposed to show us that there exists some positive epsilon value, hence the radius of one of these arbitrarily tiny intervals, so that the only value of S in the subset is three, right? And that, that means that three is not an accumulation point, accumulation point of S because we can't get an open interval around three such that there's some other number in that interval that is not three, but is yet in S at the same time. So it's not an accum accumulation point of S. But, however, if you go and recall the, the quick explanation of the definition of an isolated point, this is actually the definition of an isolated point. So go back up here, just go scroll up real quick, just to remind ourselves of this, All right? So up here, this statement right there. If you have some number, right, whatever it is, call it Y, X, whatever, and it's in the set of consideration, but it is not in the set of accumulation points, then that value, that point is called an isolated point of the set S. And that's exactly what just happened in our example that we looked at with the number three. Scroll all the way back down here, sorry. Right, so hence, it also tells us that three is an isolated point. It doesn't have any neighbors. So there you go, that's the video. I hope that it helps you understand the concept of an accumulation point and also an isolated point. Until the next video. Later.